This video is sponsored by our friends at Exter. You know, every year Apple updates its iPhone software, and this year is no exception. iOS 18 will be out soon, and you'll be able to update your iPhone, which, you know, sometimes makes it feel like a new phone. I don't know about you, but it seems like there are some years there's a lot of hype about the latest software, and then I run the update and everything pretty much feels the same. Not this year. Hi, my name is Rich. If you're new here, welcome. I make easy to follow videos on how to use your iPhone and iPad without going nuts. If that sounds like something that might interest you, please consider subscribing. You know, because unlike every other subscription you have, subscribing to this channel is free. Today we're going to look at what's coming around the iPhone corner. Okay, let's get started. Okay, first up is just the new home screen customizations that you can do. You know, in the past, you always had your icons up here, and whenever you added a new icon uh, to the home screen, let's just add one. Um, I'm going to tap Add to Home Screen. It would just go like that right there. But now you can adjust those any way you want. So if you tap and hold on the screen, you can actually move them like this. which is a completely new way of adjusting your icons. You know, so now if you have a picture over here and you just want your icons over there, or maybe you just want them close to your hand so you can tap, it's a new way to do it. Um, if you tap now and you go to edit, you can tap on customize. And here's sort of the new thing that you might be seeing all over the internet. First of all, if you look at your icons, they all have the name of the application underneath them, and it's been that way since the very beginning of the iPhone. But now, if you go from small to large, it makes the icons a little larger, and it gets rid of the name of the application. And I think I'm going to like that because I know that this is Reminders and Notes and Wallet and Calendar and Find My. I don't really need to have that underneath there, but it's there if you need it. And the other big thing is that you can change your icons from light to dark, like that. We've not been able to do that before. And that is just really cool. You can also tint these icons. If you notice, they're all sort of the same colors they were. Notes was yellow and black and all of that kind of stuff. But again, if you go back in to edit and you go to customize, now you can change them to tinted, and you can just change them like that, and you can lighten them up. You can make them a totally different color, like that, maybe green. You know, it'll kind of try to find some of the colors in your background, if you like that. And now you've got an entirely new look to your iPhone, something that we've not been able to do at any point in the past. Um, I'm not sure how much I like that, but I'm going to play with it and just see. But I know that I do like the dark icons. Um, and if I turn off tinted, if I go back to dark, I can turn them off and get them back to the way they were before. But that's pretty cool. Okay, next up is Dynamic Island. I don't really think this is a big change, but it is kind of handy. If you notice, there's nothing up in Dynamic Island, this little black thing up here at the top is the dynamic island. If I open the clock app though, and let's say that I want to set a timer for 15 minutes, and I just tap it like this, and now the timer is running. If I go away from the timer, it now shows up in the dynamic island. So you don't have to have the timer on your screen, but it's still running in the background. If you tap on it, you can open it back up and see that it's still running. If you want to just close it, you can tap and hold like this, pause it like that, and then tap the X, and now you've got it closed. And that's kind of handy, I guess. I'll see whether I use that feature or not, but at least you don't have to have the whole big app open uh, while it's running. Another thing is that you can turn on the flashlight and now you can see I've got the flashlight on. And it shows up in the dynamic island too. And if you tap on the flashlight, 
you can turn it off from here. So just tap it and now it's off. And now you don't have to mess around with opening control center and turning the flashlight off. Just another little handy feature. Again, these are kind of small changes. I'm not sure how much I'm going to use the dynamic island stuff, but at least it's there. Hey, now seems like a good time to jump in and tell you about today's sponsor, Exter. They've supported this channel for a while, and they make the best wallets on planet Earth. In fact, I made a whole video about their wallets, and I'll include a link in the description below if you'd like to check that out. Suffice it to say, I use their carbon fiber wallet every day. I will never go back to my old thick wallet. But now they've added a new ingredient I've been waiting for, Exter's Finder Card. And by Finder Card, I mean a really thin card that works with Apple Find My. This is just awesome. Set up as easy as adding an item in the Find My app and you're good to go. Pop your Finder Card into your Exter wallet and you'll never lose it again. I don't normally leave my wallet laying around, but I have misplaced it a number of times and I have to retrace my steps to find it. Not anymore with the Finder card. Now should I leave my wallet in a restaurant on the table or in the center storage compartment of my car, I can open the Find My app and, you know, find my wallet. How cool is that? Whether I'm using the minimalist aluminum wallet or the gorgeous leather wallet, I always make sure I've got my Finder card installed. It works seamlessly with my iPhone and provides peace of mind that wasn't there before. This really is an innovative product. Be sure to check out the links in the description below for more information on not only the new Finder card and these beautiful wallets, but all of Exter's products. Okay, back to the video. So the next really big addition to the iPhone is Passwords, and it's a new app that gets loaded. It works on the back of Keychain, but now, rather than being all confusing like Keychain was, even if you know anything about Keychain, Keychain stores all your passwords. Now you've got a way of doing it on your own and taking a look at it. So when I open up passwords, I have to do my face ID to open it. There we go. Um, you can see that I have 271 passwords, of which 166 have been compromised in some way. So this thing has kept track of all the little websites that I've had to log into and create a password for through the years. And you know, there's probably only, I don't know, a half a dozen that I actually visit. So I've created a folder down here called Important Passwords. And you can create folders by tapping on this little folder icon down on the bottom left corner and then naming it whatever you want to name it. I'll just name it Test so that you'll see. And it's created this um, folder and now I can add passwords to that. And how you add passwords to it is you tap on all and we'll go here, we'll tap on this and then it says not shared. I'm going to tap on the group and I'll place it into test and I'll move it and I'll go back to passwords. And you'll see there's one password in the test folder. So what I've done is I've created a folder called important passwords and then I've got one called delete these passwords. And I'm just going to go through all these accounts. I'm not, I'm not going to go back to some website and try to delete my account for 270 accounts. There's just, there's just no way I'm going to do that. And I don't really care. But I am going to identify the important accounts that I have like banking and a few others and I'm going to put them in important passwords, and if I find that the password has been compromised in some way, then I'm going to go in and change it and try to clean that up. And this new app will allow me to do that pretty easily. I'll end up making a whole video on this app, I'm sure, once iOS 18 is out for the public. But it's a handy new little application that's coming. Another change coming with iOS is Calendar. If you t open your Calendar app, and you have it sort of like this where you can see the month and you tap on the day. Now you can get a list of all your things that are going on here. But if you tap on this, now you can see where it shows single day and multi day. And you get a couple of views that are here. And then you can get a list. But in any case, one of the things you'll notice here are tasks. So I've got wash car, walk with Lindsay, dinner with Paul and Laura, send invoices, rotate tires. 
These are tasks that I have over in reminders. Dinner with Paul, walk with Lindsay, rotate tires. And I put a date on those tasks and reminders to the day that I want those things to be done. And when I do that, when I add a date in reminders, they show up in calendar as, a, as something that needs to be done on a given day. And if you notice, if I go to single day, I have a gym right there. And you can see I've got tasks here that I haven't checked off yet but they show up here in the all day section. And it's just a handy new little feature. They're finally integrating reminders and calendar uh, the way that it used to be when these apps first came out. And I think that's a really good change. You know, another new little feature is uh, the way that we have widgets. So I have some apps here. And if you remember, the way to add a widget to your home screen in the past is you'd tap and hold, and you'd go to edit, and you'd go to add widget and then you'd go through here and you'd find a widget like this and you'd click add widget and that would be the widget that would be on your home screen and then if you wanted to get rid of it you'd have to tap it and just remove the widget now you can just tap and hold on a widget and you have new choices either the small little uh, icon that you see there or a larger widget like that, or you can make it any size the widget uh, is available to it. So we can even get a really big one like that. And if you want to go back to just the icon size, you can go back right there and tap on that. And now you've got your icons back just like that. And that's just a little shortcut way to take care of creating widgets on your home screen without having to do a lot of pressing and clicking. I think this is definitely going to be a feature I use. So I've made a couple of videos on Control Center. You, to get to Control Center, you just swipe down from the right, and now you're in Control Center. And this kind of looks like the old Control Center. But now, if you can see this, you've got these little icons, kind of tiny ones down here. It's for music, for the home app, and then for Bluetooth and Wi-Fi. And if you tap on that, it takes you to the music app right away. Or if you tap on this, it takes you to the home app. Or if you tap on the little Wi-Fi, you get all your cellular data, personal hotspot, and information like that. This little heart is the favorite things that are up here. And you really couldn't do much to, to Control Center. You could go into Settings and add a few things to Control Center. But now they sort of streamline that too. So if you tap and hold, now you can see you've got these little corner things here and you can grab it and resize the widget to the size you want. And if you'll notice, you've got some blank spaces down here and you can add a control if you want to. So you tap on add a control and now you've got all different kinds of things down here that you can add that you didn't have the ability to do before. So we'll just put the calculator in there and now I've got the calculator and if I just tap away it's there. You can move these things around the way you want like that and sort of organize it in a way that makes sense to you. And by the way you have your old control center here but you can just slide down and kind of go through these just like this. If you don't want to tap on these little icons you can just slide like this. So now Control Center has a whole lot more functionality. I'll be making a video on this too because this is one of those things that'll be really handy once you get the hang of it. Okay, the last thing I want to show you is just some lock screen customization. So to get to your lock screen, you just slide down like this and you tap and hold and you go to customize. Now we're going to customize the lock screen, so I'll tap on that. And now if you notice, we always had the flashlight and the camera down here, but now you can change that. If you don't want that, you can hit the little minus and get rid of it. And now you can tap the plus, and now you have a whole bunch of other choices that you can put in there. If you want to put the magnifier or change it to dark mode or something like that, you can. You can get to your home or your music. I'm going to add quick notes. So now quick notes is down here instead of the flashlight. If I just tap done, 
and tap on it again. Now I've got quick notes. So when I pick it up, if I want to make a quick note, I can just tap and hold, and I've got a quick note right from the lock screen. I don't even have to go into the application to get to it anymore or swipe from anywhere else. I can do this directly from the lock screen. And when I'm done, it takes me right back to the lock screen. Pretty handy. You know, this is one of those years where it feels like a real change is coming. The kind that'll change the way I use my iPhone. But we'll just have to wait and see. Okay, that's it for this short review. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.